So what is the best and quickest dark table workflow? I wish there was an easy answer with a solid explanation. I've been doing travel photography for 10 years and in this video I'm gonna tell you all I do in my dark table workflow. It's an easy A steps process and you'll be surprised by a few points. But let's dig into it. The first step into my dark table workflow is uh, to move the photos from the SD card to the folder that I've created to host all of my photos for that particular trip. In my travel photography workflow, I usually organize my photos in folders based on the year and the destination I visit. So for example, if I, I go to 2019, I created two folders for my Sydney visit here and for my Vietnam visit. And then within Vietnam, because I moved to different places, uh, I added also subfolders for the destination that I visit within the country, for example, Hanoi, Ajahn, Nibin, and uh, the date that you see in the front is uh, the first day I visit uh, this destination. For today's videos, I've decided to import uh, photos from a day around Melbourne during one of my workshops I usually run in the city. And these photos are actually from 2019 because in 2020 we've been in lockdown almost since March and I just store them on my hard drive, but I actually never organize these photos or retouch them. So let's get into it. These are all of my photos in a row format time to import these photos so I move a folder away I'll go on import folder I select the folder which I already organized here I click on open and you see here the counter is importing 100 photos and they are all here ready to be uh, organized and edited but let's get into the folder to see what happened to my photos as you see together with a photo there is also an XMP file created and that's where all of the edit is stored for this uh, photo. The second step in my process is to reject the photos that I don't need and I found that the easiest way to understand if a photo is good and it can actually stay in my folder is to go into the sticky preview with focus detection that you can do with Control alt w and um, in this view I have a um, the photo with all of the focus point highlighted into these red squares. So I can go through them and start my rejecting with R when I don't like the photo. For example, this photo doesn't tell me that much, so I do R. As you see here on the left side, there is an X, a red X, which is basically a reject. And I do that for all of the photos. I just go quickly through that. I need you closer than ever, ever than before. I've reached the end of my reject phase and let's move to step number three. I don't usually delete immediately the rejected photos just in case I make some mistakes and I do that only once I finish all the selection and the processing of the photos. Now let's get into step number three which is the rating of the photos. Obviously I want to see only the ones that have not been rejected so I put a filter here on top all except rejected and I go through all of them which are 44 now down from over 100 and I start putting a, a one star if it's a photo that I like. No, I'll never let you go. Now that I finish ranking with one star, I do a filter only on the photos with one star and I put a second star only on the photos that I want to process in the darkroom view. Definitely want this one, this one, this one and that one. Before moving into the editing of the photos, I want to tag the photos and I don't want to tag only the one that I edit but all of them. So I go back to all except the rejected and I start the tagging phase. I go a little bit smaller and obviously I start first adding the place that I'm visit in this case um, is Melbourne and uh, then uh, I start indicating the type of a photo building landscape people street art and maybe also the technique for example panning reflection and other possible keywords that I may need to do a lookup in future and here I am on step 5 which is the application 
of the style. The style is like the Lightroom preset if you are used to the Adobe software. And um, I used Lightroom for many years and I used to apply the preset in the develop window. However, with Darktable, I had to change slightly my workflow because um, the selection of the style in the Darkroom view is not that friendly. In this case, I stay in the light table and I select only the photos that I want to work with, ranked with two stars, and they are these four photos on the top. I go then to my styles window where I have organized all of my styles in groups and black and white interior night people and the traveler that are usually mostly for travel photos. So what I do now, I take each photo and apply a style. And for me, this is a good starting point for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that 80% of the editing is done with a style and uh, I keep a consistency into my photos and also to speed up the process because if I go through 100 photos and I want to edit at the end four of them, I don't want to spend too much time into it. I just want to do the work done. It may be not 100% perfect, but it's that 95% perfect which I'm happy with. And if I have a photo which is absolutely outstanding, then I can spend you know more hours or even days. In saying this, um, I suggest you to build your own style and uh, which you you can build from scratch into the darkroom view or you can take um, a style from someone else. I'm going to leave a link into the video description where you can download my style uh, but I would suggest anyway to apply some changes to the style otherwise you end up with photos similar to mine which is probably not what you want. When I apply the style I like to see one photo at a time so I go down to just one photo and uh, whenever you apply a style to a photo you have to click first single click to the photo and then I go on Traveler and for example I try this Dreamy 2 double click and if I don't like it I just do Ctrl Z and I come back to the original. Unfortunately Darktable doesn't have a preview, a live preview uh, similar to what uh, you have for example in Adobe Lightroom. Now on this photo I'm quite sure I have um, a style which is into the interior group uh, which works perfectly for the colors that I have in this photo which are uh, sort of brownish and bluish and this is the DSA TNO where TNO stands for teal and orange and what is going to happen is uh, gonna insert teal and orange into the highlights, mid-tone and shadows of the photo. It's a good starting point for this photo. I'm gonna do some editing later in Darkroom like cropping and so on but I'm happy with the first step. Then I go to the yellow tables here and I apply the Dreamy Tooth style which I'm happy with. Uh, of course I know all of these styles because I've been using them for many years uh, and they were into my Lightroom uh, workflow and now I move them into the dark table workflow. I go to the other photo and this one in my opinion works best with low tone TNO where TNO is a teal and orange and you see it's more of a street photo which I love. And I now move to the last photo which is the one with the bricks. I select the photo and I go for the black and white style and here it is. And again another good starting point. I may want to add some uh, uh, mid-tone contrast here. It's now time to move to the dark room view and I'm going to do just with the four photos where I already apply my style. I go to the first one to start with. I do my work in dark room in uh, two phases. The first phase is to add the modules that I need to enhance my photo for example I want to do some uh, cropping to this photo and um, possibly I want to also rotate it a little bit and correct the perspective and the second phase is uh, to tweak the colors a little bit and possibly the contrast and in doing that I go into my active group where all of my active modules uh, are uh, listed and that's where I'm gonna work uh, and it's so much easier I finished the editing of these photos. I didn't want to include the editing into this video just because otherwise the video would have been too long and it's not really the subject of this video but I want to show you the results and I've done already some snapshots of before and after. So this is for the first photo. Let's move to the second photo where I concentrated more of the attention into the yellow table. The third photo where uh, 
I focus more on the part of a window with a person and uh, the last photo that I change it to black and white and I also added some um, local contrast here in the mid-tones on the bricks. My step number seven is to color label the photos that I want to publish and all of the photos that I want to publish I usually put a yellow label so I go on the first one I use the F2, F3, F4 to give the colors with F2 I can give a yellow and uh, I can just mouse over the photo and uh, I apply the yellow color here. The photos that I want to publish on uh, the Instagram. I usually put a, a color label of green. Let's assume this is one for Instagram. I go there and I do FF3. And um, the photos that I want to put on my website, I usually color label blue. So I put four here and F4 here. And I have now the photos that are all color label. Once they are published, I just take away the yellow and I do F2 again. And uh, as you see, uh, you have only the green. The good thing about a dark table is that the colors are not exclusive, so you can add more than one color to a single photo. And now my last step is to go back into the light table and delete all of the rejected photos that I'm sure that I'm not going to need anymore. And this is it for this video. Now I just want to say that this is my dark table workflow and it's far from perfect. And in your case, it may not work as well as uh, it works for me. In saying that, it's very straightforward for me and and it's very easy to get the photos that I want to publish. I personally like to spend more time actually shooting that on the computer. In saying that, if I have an outstanding photo, obviously, you know, sometimes I spend even days on it. I see you in the next video, and I really hope that you put a like on this video as well as subscribe to the channel and tick that little bell to get a notification when I publish a new video on Darktable.